Hello everybody, welcome to the Airborne Horse Channel. This video we're going to be looking at a crossbleed engine start on the Airbus A320 as well as a uh, external pneumatic power start. So what we're sort of looking at here is we've had a failure of the APU. How do we get to the flight without the APU? So let's jump on in. We've got the uh, Airbus A320 hopefully loaded up here if it works. There it is. Right, good. Here's the Airbus A320. We are JetBlue flight, uh, flight number. We're off to Port Lauderdale anyway, but that's really irrelevant for the point of this video. We're just going to be showing the uh, engine start on the bay and the pushback and then the second engine start. So the uh, important points to look at for a uh, cross split engine start and uh, some external power is a whole bunch of checklists to go through, as well as a bunch of uh, air traffic control procedures apply to. Now I'm not really familiar with Chicago Air. I'm just going to treat it like I'm going to treat any other airport. But you have to get permission to uh, start an engine above idle thrust, and that's what we need to do to start the engines here. So we've uh, conducted the pre-flight cockpit preparation. We're ready to go, ready to push back. Most of the checks are done. Probably going to miss something, but we're going to hope for the best and see what happens. So I've still got the AP running. We're going to fail it and uh, see how we go. So what we're going to do first here is disconnect the ground. The ground power is connected, so we'll put it across to that, which we are. So we can turn the AP off at this point. Turn the AP bleed off. Turn the AP off. All right, we'll give the all clear for the uh, ground crew to shut the doors. And we'll get going with the, uh, the procedure here. So at this point here, you're going to request a with their traffic control to start an engine on the bay. They'll obviously give you a clearance for that. And then see how you go from there. Just pardon me one second. Just sorting out all the other stuff I have to run in the background here for this to work. So while we're sitting here, we're going to be taxiing to 10 left at Chicago here, take off near towards Fort Lauderdale. That's the initial plan for this flight. Uh, I may make a couple other recordings along the way as we go, but for the point here, we're just going to push back, do the engine start, and then we'll end the video there. Just uh, finalising some paperwork, which is the typical pilot thing to say here, but that's what we're doing. Right. So we're ready to go up here, we're going to do the uh, before start checklist at this point. So we go cockpit preps completed, gear pins and covers removed, signs are on auto, the aid is, and nav, fuel quantity, 11,040 kilos, power reference, one's a run full set, and we're ready to go. So now we would. Uh, be in liaison with the engineers downstairs which will have the ground power card, but before we do that we have to uh, turn both packs off, so both packs will be turned off. And uh, packs are selected off to prevent any possible contamination of the packs by the external pneumatic power. AP bleeds off, engine 1 bleed off, engine 2 bleed off, cross bleed open. I think that's open, I should go to the view so I can see it, cross bleed open. There we go, our external pneumatic power connection request. So let's go request that. External car connected. So that's connected now, and we're going to check that on the uh, systems display as well. So you can see here, we have air pressure here. Because we've got the cross wheel open, it's providing both sides. And if we go back to the engines page, sure, uh, we can't see it because I haven't selected the starter, but we will be able to see enough pressure to start the engines. So now we're cleared to start, engine 2 start, so there you go, and note here, as necessary engine 1 can also be started by using external pneumatic power. If engine 1 is started first, check the brake accumulator pressure prior to engine start. Now starting engine 1 or 2 is kind of important depending on where they put the cart. If the uh, air cart was over this side, you wouldn't start engine number 2, but it's over this side, so we can start engine number 2 first, that's what we're going to do. So at this point it's just a normal 
and then start. So you go to the checklist below the line, the windows and doors are closed, the beacon's on, thrust those out on the park brake set. And we can start engine number two. So we set the starter here to the ignition start, wait for the pages to appear. So we've got uh, indications out there, and you can see here we've got 46 psi both sides. That's perfect to start an engine. And we'll start engine number two. So wait for that to do its thing. At this point we'll get the pushback happening. So it takes a minute to set up. Great news, Captain. Your toe's coming. My toe is coming, Captain. Thank you. Starting up fine, we've got igniters AB going, got fuel flow increase, we've got EGT increase. Really, no reason to suspect any faults with the start at this point, so it's just normal as we go along. Next section to start completed there, you can hear the um, generators, the relays trip over, and just wait for the N2 box to stop being grey. And we're getting a warning air bleed one and two off. Yes, we turned them off, so we can clear that. Clear bleed to there we go, no status. Cool. Alright, so we go back here, back to the procedure. So after engine two is started, external power, we check it's available. So at this point we've got a generator going, so we're gonna change this external power button to available. So it goes to available. And then we external power disconnection All request. Right. Looks like the doors and hatches are disconnect closed, that. Ready to connect. Now if external pneumatic power is used to start engine one, we're not gonna do that. If the cross bleed engine start procedure is used to start engine one, which we are going to do, oh no, we just disconnected that by himself. Alright, the pushback guy disconnected the SR on us, that's annoying. We'll get back to that, but anyway, we've got to do some other things. Uh, external pneumatic power removal request, so we did that. Pack 1 on. Pack 2 on. Engine number 2 bleed on. And uh, cross bleed start procedure apply. So we'll do that after the pushback. So hopefully he's down there sorting out our pushback for us. I think so. So wait for him to tell us we're good to go. Walk for board, Captain. Toes connected, bypass can inserted. Go until the parking brake when you're ready to go. Alright, so park brake's off, we're off. Here comes the pushback. Light them up. So he told us to light the engines up, obviously that's not correct for what we'd be talking out here. Uh, you can't do a cross bleed start while you're doing pushback because you apply a fair bit of thrust from the supplying engine to do this. So uh, any thrust would upset the pushback driver, so it's going to let him do his thing. I have no idea if I'm pushing back the correct way or not for Chicago, but it doesn't really matter whether it's pushing back. There's really nothing we can do at this point. We're not going to be starting an engine during the pushback where there's passengers, really. And we wait. So what we're going to be doing for the cross bleed start, we have a caution here, do not perform a cross bleed engine start during pushback, so we're obviously complying with that. And simultaneous use of engine bleed supply and external pneumatic power is, is prohibited, so that's why we disconnected the external car and reconnected the uh, engine one, engine 2 bleed at that point. So what we're going to be doing here before the engine start, we're going to be um, making sure the APU bleeds off. Engine bleed on the supplying engine has got to be on, engine bleed on the receiving engine has got to be off, and the cross bleed valve has got to be open. We can check all that now, so APU lead has to be off. Yep. Turn the light on here, we can have some lights. Engine bleed on supplying engine, number two is on. Engine bleed on the receiving engine is off. 
and the cross bleed is open. Now I have to wait for one of the clear to start. Here, go ahead and set your okay, so now we can set the parking brake. He's not going to know what we're doing because he's just doing his normal pushback. So we'll let him do his thing. We're going to do our thing now too. So when clear to start, we're going to assume area clear of obstacles, confirm. And thrust lever supplying engine adjust for bleed pressure. So what we're doing here, we're looking to see this number here, 36 psi, which is already quite high. But anyway, we'll adjust our thrust. We'll set it to 40 just for the exercise here. So we can put thrust up here, but we don't want to set more than 40% M1 because that's going to give us issues. So M1 here, 44%. So the actual descent is 40% because otherwise you have too much wake out the back. Okay. So now we uh, thrust lever supplying engine just for bleed pressure, we've done that. Receiving engine start. So start. And from here that should start the engine. See the engine spring. And we're disconnected. Signal on the right. Take it easy and have a safe flight. Grand guy's gone, so he's buggering off. Don't need him anymore. Now once the starter closes here, the start power closes, we can set the thrust back to idle. We don't need anything above idle anymore once that's done. Side of our cross line, we can go thrust to leave it at idle. Turn all those off. Now, what does the checklist say? After start, thrust lever supplying engine to idle. We've done that. Cross bleed to auto. Cross bleed to auto. Engine bleed receiving engine on. On. Pack one on. Pack two off. So you can see all our lights are back to normal. Everything's back to where it started. Both engines are running. And then we're back to our normal procedure. So at this point here, it's the uh, normal procedure for the Arthur engine start. So we set that thing to normal. APB is already off. Engine, AP mass is already off, and engine ice is going to be off. We can go through and do this as well. Get ourselves ready for taxi. Point one up. Point eight up. Check our status. Normal. And you can go through the after start checklist. And that's really all, all we wanted to show you here was just how to do a uh, pneumatic start on the bay with a cross bleed start after pushback. Hopefully that helps you with uh, your abnormal procedures, but it's really non event. And like we said in the simulator world, everything usually works pretty good. But uh, hopefully this gives you a quick idea on what to expect if you uh, ever come across the need to do a start without the APU. Uh, thank you for watching us here at the Airborne Horse. Please follow us on uh, Instagram, airborne underscore horse at, well, this is Instagram, and uh, airborne horse at gmail.com if you have any questions. Also, don't forget to like, and subscribe, and follow the videos. Leave any comments down below if you have any questions, I'll get back to you. And uh, otherwise, thank you very much for joining us here at the Airborne Horse. Catch you in the next video.